You know, this is how I earn a living. Huh? Really? I thought you were just doing it for fun. I suppose some people do. Hello, I'm some people. Nice to meet you. All right, we're done screwing around, and we're just going to go back to Eris's house. So it's going to be a this way. I'm pretty sure we're done all of the side quests in this area, so we're ready to move on now. Hello, Aerith. What do you want? Haven't seen him before. He your new boy toy? He's my bodyguard, if you must know. Wait a minute. Those eyes. Is he the one who beat up Reno? And what if I am? Need to cross my T's, dot my I's, that's all. Cloud, leave him be. Rude's not a bad person, really. No, I'm not bad. But like it or not, I sometimes have to do bad things. <sighs> Don't take it personal. You Turks are all the same. All bark, no bite. You're one to talk. In the original game, the Turks were introduced pretty much one at a time and spaced out pretty far. The first Turk you've run into is Reno at the church, like we had seen a couple of episodes ago. Then you ran into Rude, but Rude was... Actually, you know what? I got that wrong. You ran into Reno first, and then later on during the collapse of the Sector 7 plate, you saw Sun. And then you see Rude in the Shinra Tower. And then you don't run into Elena until after you've left Midgar. So, they spread the introduction of all the Turk characters out over a pretty significant portion of the game. In this one, though, they're sort of pushing through with this a little bit faster. Now, I guess it kind of makes sense because Rude is a popular character among the fans and they want to introduce the Rude into this game. Unfortunately, though, Rude wouldn't be seen if they followed the original story of the game until we were in the Shinra building. In fact, it was Rude that captured them and then led them to be uh, confronting the Shinra president. That is going to, considering that this game ends as we leave Midgar, and that section of the original game happens pretty close to what would be the end of this game, it makes sense that they're going to introduce Rude earlier. So even though it is deviating from the original game, I'm not going to sit here and give him too much shit for that. I've said this before, and I'm going to probably repeat this a whole bunch of times. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me how Aerith, who was originally, uh, when she was a child and a baby, kidnapped by Shinra because they were planning on using her to research a way of uh, finding the Promised Land because she's an ancient. She's one of the Sentra. Okay, so they're doing that research. She escapes. They know where she is. They clearly know where she is because... She knows all the Turks by name. They, uh, I mean, even, a, even, uh, what the hell is her name? Um, Aerith's adopted mother says that Rude had stopped by. And, like, so clearly the Turks know where she is. And I don't know how much time has passed. Probably, I'm gonna say, like, 15 years have passed since she escaped Shinra. In all that time, they've never managed to reacquire her. Like, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Mm. Okay, then. <laughs> so, you had enough yet? No. I don't believe that I have. And it's especially bad in this game because they make reference to, like, Aerith even knowing the Turks by name and she 
like she stops Cloud from killing Reno, and she says that Rude isn't a bad guy. So clearly, like her interactions with them aren't particularly pleasant, but she doesn't consider them to be terrible people. So the only way that I can think around this problem is thinking that I guess the Turks have been more or less assigned to keep tabs on her rather than kidnapping her. And it wasn't until Reno had actually shown up at the church that Shinra gave them the orders, okay, you know what, get her and bring her in. Because, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Aerith is a pretty competent fighter, but she's not... She wouldn't be able to defend herself against any of the Turks. And I doubt anybody in Sector 5 would have been willing to hide her. It, it, it's not like even hiding her would have been an, a possibility. They knew where she was. So I guess they were just sort of keeping tabs on her, and it wasn't until... It wasn't until that scene in the church that they actually went to kidnap her again. Which doesn't make any sense to me either. Like, what, did Shinra just put on hold their research? I guess that would make sense. I wonder if later on in this game if they're going to put some effort into explaining that away. There are a number of other things that I've seen so far that felt like odd plot holes in the original game that they're putting some effort into explaining away. I guess uh, an early example of that perhaps would have been when, uh, well, Cloud was supposedly in Soldier. He wasn't in Soldier in the original game. He just thinks he was. He was in Shinra, though. He worked for Shinra as one of their troops. And he, you'd think, like, somebody would have recognized him, especially if he was supposed to be a first-class soldier. Doesn't it feel strange that nobody seems to know who he was, or he no, he would think it was strange that nobody remembers him? Especially considering how few first-class soldiers there were. It's supposed to be a very, very select group. But, uh, like, okay, President Shinra doesn't know who he is, none of the Turks seem to know who he is, Hojo doesn't seem to know who he is, nobody seems to know who the hell he is. In this, they're like, like, oh, <laughs> he claims to be a first-class soldier to Reno, and Reno just laughs at him. It's like, yeah, you're bullshitting me there. But they kind of, like, made up for that odd thing in this game a little bit by having somebody recognize Cloud. Now, we don't know who that was. It was a, it was a trooper that we had seen in one of the early episodes when we were running around on the plate, and Cloud was confronted by those by those MPs. On. One of them recognized Cloud. Didn't say his name or anything like that, but at least somebody recognized him. Because he wasn't a soldier, but he did work for Shinra, and somebody should have recognized him. And in this game, somebody does. Please, just leave us alone. You know I can't do that. <sighs> Hey there, partner. Huh? I'm sure uh, you're having the time of your uh, life, but we're needed on standby uh, for a job as something uh, about Sector 7. Uh, so get your ass back here now. Understood. Got somewhere else to be? Apparently so. Go home and stay there. You know I can't do that. Huh? <laughs> I really hope they don't neuter the Turks in this game. Because there tends to be this kind of thing when we rehash stories that they want to try and go and redeem popular characters. Now... Reno especially did some terrible shit in the original game. He he was the one that dropped the Sector 7 plate and killed a lot of people. He did it under orders, but he still did it. So, kind of like some irredeemable things, but he still ended up being a popular character nonetheless. But when you get to, say, Advent Children or whatever, there tends to be this sort of downplaying of the Turks as being these antagonistic characters. 
And I'm hoping that they don't lose their nerve with this. Just like I'm hoping they don't lose their nerve when it comes to killing off Aerith. Because that was one of the things that made the story so impactful was her death. And I'm afraid that they might chicken out and do it differently or not do it at all. And I'm like, the Turks were popular because of what they were. Not what people wanted them to be or any other perception of them. Don't change the Turks. Uh, you talking to the... Shh. So, yeah. It was that kind of day. <sighs> Let's go. Shouldn't keep Mom waiting. Hey. What'd they say? Good work today, guys. Kidding. They didn't say a word. But, you know... Uh, never mind. It's not like you'd believe me, after all. Hmm. Probably not. Tell me anyway. Really? Yeah. It won't be much longer now. The flowers, they... They have something important to tell us. Something they... Need to share with us. At least, that's the feeling I get. But, before they can... There's a final step that has to be taken. Otherwise, we won't hear them. Maybe I should just give up. Honestly, it's what I do best. Could have fooled me. From what I've seen, you're no quitter. Well, today's special. That's why I've been working my butt off. Uh, what's so special about it? <laughs> okay, time to go. Learn to talk to her. Did the flower say anything? Uh, good work today, guys? the spirit Aerith can hear the kind of cries of the planet and the and the planet talking to them it's eventually later on in the game in the original game anyway the other characters have some capacity to hear the cries of the planet so it's not necessarily just the ancients that can do that but it is a thing that since she is one of the Cetra that she can hear the speaking of the planet or the cries of the planet in pain because of what Shinra is doing. And I'm guessing that's what we were seeing there. Although the, she sort of plays it off like she was joking or she was just playing around. She probably was trying to communicate with the planet there and of course Cloud can't hear it because Cloud isn't one of the ancients. I'm wondering what the thought process was by having, like, later on in the original game, the other characters able to hear it. Maybe because the cries got louder, so other people could hear it. Or maybe the Cetra bloodline go, is not completely dead in the rest of the population. Yeah. That's enough for one day. I don't know, that's a thought. Just pull it out of my ass, but it's a thought. Where have you two been? Uh, I've been worried sick. Sorry. We got a little sidetracked. Dinner's ready, in case you're wondering. Ah, great. But before we sit down, I want you to make up the guest room. Gotcha. Take a load off, okay? Judging by those eyes, I'm guessing you're a soldier. Ex-soldier. I hate to ask, 
But would you leave tonight without any fuss, no questions? You boys made a trade, a normal life, for power. You can't have it both ways. I'm back! Good! Now, I hope you're hungry. Starving, right? Uh. I've never been so proud. The man you've become? Women must be hounding you day and night. Not really. You know, there's all kinds of temptations in the big city. I'd feel a lot better if I knew you'd found a good girl. One who'd make sure you didn't get into trouble. I can take care of myself. An older, more mature girl. I could keep you on the straight and narrow. And tell you when you're being a silly goose. That's the perfect type for you, I'd say. Stay my welcome. What are you doing? Uh, uh, nothing. Did you have a bad dream? Don't worry, you'll feel much better in the morning. And I promise to take you straight home. Uh, you know, okay. I, can un I can understand where Elmira is coming from with her request that Cloud sneak out at night. Because she is, overall, just trying to protect Aerith from, from whatever trouble Cloud may bring. But at the same time, I can't help but feel sorry for Cloud. Not just because of this, but... Hold on. You're leaving? So, how do I get to Sector 7? It's simple enough. Just cut through Sector 6. It isn't exactly safe, but you should be okay, seeing as you're a soldier. Was one. Promise me, you'll never talk to Aerith again. Please. You got it. Thank you. Cloud is a guy who has had kind of a rough past. He doesn't really remember his own past or understand it properly, but nonetheless it's still been kind of rough because he was kind of driven out of his hometown by his own mental issues. And he leaves for the big city and it doesn't work out for him. He doesn't get the job that he wants. He returns home and has to watch his mother die. His hometown burnt to the ground. And, well, his lifestyle, his way of life, burned away with it. He eventually loses his best friend, Zack, so... The only thing he seems to have left in the world is this kind of mercenary lifestyle which he's acquired for himself, or sort of fallen into. Now, I guess if things worked out differently, he would have potentially had a relationship with Tifa, but she's not really forward enough with her emotions towards Cloud to break through this kind of barrier that he's erected up around himself. Now, he runs into Aerith, who is. She is flirtatious enough and forward enough with her feelings and emotions to get through to him. Oh. Well, look who it is. Talk about a coincidence. What are you doing here? Waiting. Why? Because I'm not sick of you yet. <laughs> Lead on, then. With pleasure. Cloud? Is something wrong? It's nothing. 
with Cloud having this lifestyle of secluded emotions like this, it is kind of depressing for him, but the one girl he runs into who seems to be capable of breaking through that facade of his, he's asked to never see again. And that's, that's just depressing. And that's... The underside of Sector 6, Wall Market, a real special place. But I'm sure you already knew that, right? I didn't tell you? I enlisted pretty much right after I left home. Don't know much about this place, or any of the slums. 